Texas Monthly's ranking of the best and worst, worst state legislators is out, and there are a few surprises. One of the most divisive lawmakers this session made the best list, and a few folks on last session's worst list turned things around. Our Josh Hinkle took an in-depth look with the man behind the list. Joining us now is R.G. Ratcliffe, politics editor for Texas Monthly. The magazine's list of best and worst lawmakers is out. So tell me a little bit about the people that were chosen for the best and worst. I know that there were some lawmakers that were on the worst list last year that are on the best list this year. That happens. I mean, you know, you, you get various people that... Uh, uh, actually, probably one of the, better, the examples that pops into my mind right off the bat was uh, Dan Huberty, who was at one time named Rookie of the Year and then sort of fell off the, the uh, scoreboard for a while. And then this year he came back and was just a dynamic legislator uh, in the House pushing a school finance reform package that died in the Senate. But still, he, he took on that and he took on some other big issues in the House. And so... Uh, you know, it's it's really performance based, and it goes from session to session. So, it is quite possible for someone to be on the worst list one year and the best the next. I, I think one of the example that you're probably thinking of is Senator Joan Huffman from Houston. Uh, she was on the worst list two years ago for being intransient and and sort of an operator of the uh, district attorneys association. Um, but this year she. Uh, was much more flexible. There was legislation that she had killed two years ago that she still opposed, but she didn't get in its way this time around. Uh, that was a what they called the second chance bill for young felons uh, who had nonviolent crimes to have their records sealed from having to disclose them to potential employers to try and give them a second chance in life. And she also carried the, uh, the legislation to overhaul the Houston pension. So. There were some Central Texas lawmakers on the worst list. I know we had Lois Colcors, Charles Schwartner, and uh, Donna Dukes from our area. Um, what, do you, what do you think about all that? Well, Donna Dukes, uh, that was sort of an easy one because uh, she had promised that she was going to uh, resign if elected and then reneged on her promise. Then she uh, uh, got indicted for misuse of office. Uh, of course, that's not, a, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. The week after the session started. The week after the session started. And then for the second session in a row, she missed uh, the majority of votes, more than the majority, most of the votes. Um, so she just was a, a terrible representative of her district. Um, Lois Colcourse, uh, some people will think that she got on the, the worst list just simply because she was the sponsor of the so-called bathroom bill. But uh, part of it was that, you know, in the beginning that bill was promoted as being about public safety. Uh, but along the way, uh, Cole Korst and Dan Patrick made it pretty clear that this was a, a, an issue of the religious right and that it was uh, really kind of persecution of a minority group in Texas rather than being about public safety. Uh, Schwartner. Uh, a lot of a lot of the way he got on there is just through he's a doctor and he doesn't have very good bedside manner and uh, his temperament is such that uh, uh, when he was uh, holding hearings on some uh, legislation uh, to restrict abortions uh, there was a young woman who was testifying against the bill and so obviously against his wishes and uh, when she talked too long, he gaveled her down very hard and uh, uh, shattered a tabletop in the Senate. Yeah. Uh, so Things like that really stick with people, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, what are your readers saying about this list so far? So far, um, probably the one that gets the, the most attention is the fact that we put Texas uh, Freedom Caucus Chairman uh, uh, Matt Schaefer on the best list. He... Uh, he carried the uh, the amendment that was called uh, "Show Me Your Papers" on sanctuary cities, which a lot of people think is going to lead to racial profiling of Hispanics who are both citizen and non-citizen. Um, police departments are concerned that it's going to undermine their ability to control their officers. But the Freedom Caucus. Uh, essentially was like the whip of the Texas House at the end of the session. 
they could push uh, Republican legislators into taking votes that they didn't necessarily want to take. And Schaefer was more or less the captain of the team. And his district really supports a lot of crackdown on illegal immigrants so uh, or undocumented immigrants. And so he was representing his district. And we are going to be talking about show me your papers for months to come. So. That's uh, kind of why he made the list. Do these things, uh, do you ever notice that they trickle down later on? I mean, it, cl clearly people are paying attention to it in these days right after it comes out. But, you know, something like Donna Dukes' case, uh, do people remember this kind of thing when it comes to election time? A lot of times they do. Uh, we put uh, Lubbock Senator Charles Perry on the worst list for uh, taking some actions that were pretty much diametrically opposed to what the wishes of his district are, and he wrote probably the longest response, about 500 words, you know, defending himself. And I think there's a potential that that could affect him in the election. Donna Dukes, she's got bigger problems than <laughs> the 10 worst list. Um, but really, you know, the list is not intended to affect anyone in their election or re-election. It's, it's really just a measuring stick of the legislature. and we. We talked to uh, dozens of lobbyists, and we talked to other legislators, and we talked to journalists from other publications to get their input. Um, so it's a it's sort of a, a list that's put together by uh, me being the filter for a giant committee at the Capitol. I wonder what the lawmakers that are involved, what they have to say, or their fellow lawmakers. I mean, we've got a special session coming out, so they're yeah. all going to have to see each other again <laughs> pretty quick. Yeah, well, let's just put it this way. Uh, the ones who are on the best list typically put out press releases saying they were honored to be on the, press, uh, on the prestigious Texas Monthly Best List, and the ones who are on the worst list Either, uh, either just say it's it's a total mistake or it's fake news or uh, whatever, and that it's wholly and completely unfair. So uh, that's pretty common every session. So. <laughs> <laughs> After the special session, will there be any kind of update? Will you will you look for a best and worst list of that N special no, session? No, it's just done for the regular mm -hmm. session, and uh, and even with the special coming up, it's it's usually too limited to to make a a, a broad statement like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate you joining us, and you've, you've got a copy here. I do have a copy. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll be in the grocery stores. It also has our wonderful story uh, by another writer on uh, Whole Foods and everything that led up to the sale recently. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you um, joining us. You can get a link to the Texas Monthly Best and Worst list on our website at kxan.com. Thank you Good. for joining us. Thank you for having me. We reached out to all the lawmakers on the best and worst list for comment. As you'd expect, the tone of the response varied depending on which list they made. Chris Patty, a Republican House member from Marshall, called it an honor to make the best list. Patty said the recognition reflects the tireless work from himself and his staff for the people of East Texas. A spokesman for Donna Dukes said it was not fair for her to be named to the worst lawmaker list because of her battle with serious health issues. He called it part of a pattern of unfair criticism for the only African-American lawmaker in Central Texas. Deuce's spokesman called the list one guy sending out a press release for his happy hour and called Texas Monthly a magazine no one in her district reads. Georgetown Senator Charles Schwartner also slammed Texas Monthly. He called it a liberal Austin travel magazine with contempt for conservative leadership. But Schwartner has another beef with the magazine. He says Texas Monthly's best barbecue list underrated a well-known spot in his district. Schwartner wrote, it's a well-known fact that Louis Miller's has the best barbecue in Texas. So clearly Texas Monthly has shown the ability to be wrong about more than just politics.